And it's so calm. She's sitting at home. You are doing great, Anne. Roll, roll on. Okay, run on. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Um, welcome our guest today that will have a presentation. But before we go there, everybody in the room read the minutes? Mm -hmm. The minutes, no, well, for the commissioners. Yeah, the minutes from last month. Any comment? Anything to add to take away? I move that we accept the minutes. Second. Thank you. I have to double check if then we can even do that with. Um, well, if we can't, we'll do it next time. It will do it next time. But if. If, okay, well, thank you very much. But it's good to know that it's like that. Um, sorry, I'm on over the place. Um, just on paper and also, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so everybody on paper? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, good. Everybody, any comments against our um, well, no. amendment? No. Well, thank you very much. So I want to welcome our friends. Neville and sorry, sorry, Bobby. And Bobby, and then we have Maggie and Drill that are gonna um, present uh, their respective projects. I just want to remind everybody we have 10 minutes only for presentation uh, because this is the only meeting that the commission has is once a month and it's gonna be less than an hour and a half, right? We're gonna have to leave the room like five minutes earlier. So but then we will have time for questions, answer, exchange. It's just that I'm, I'm going to ask you guys to try to keep it in those 10 minutes so we can then move forward with our regular business. OK? So any preference? Who wants to start? Okay. Oh, we look like David, right? Yeah. So uh, let's see. Let me just try something, see if this is actually going to work. It's going to work. Uh, Start and then I'll okay, <laughs> sure. listen and we can shut this all off. Okay. 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 Wherever okay. it's, it's comfortable for you. Yeah, um, should I not be sharing the screen right now? No, leave it. Yeah, leave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd just like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to come and talk to you about our project. Um, my name is Neville Bean. All of you know me, uh, and I'm here with my co-producer, Robert Vandway, otherwise known as Bobby. And uh, <laughs> I, I've heard it through my sources that, that you'd like this to be short and sweet. And I'd like to start the presentation with three things that we would request of the Arts Commission. Okay. One is that we're looking to get a, a stamp of approval from you all on, on the direction that we're going in. Uh, we're hoping to glean like, uh, hopefully like th three uh, sources of funding, possibly an introduction to Peter Buffett, if that is at all possible. And, uh, and uh, just a, a, some advice on navigating uh, fundraising in Kingston. Uh, we'd like to show you our little video, which will give you an idea of what our overall project is about. Uh, and then I have some updates for you. Go ahead. <laughs> For five years, I lived at the foot 
Street Bridge, Kingston, New York, and fell in love with its graceful swimming forms. The bridge itself is a time capsule, not only connecting the two communities, but also connecting the past and the future. Our job as architects is to follow the innovation and our common stories and holes. We're reaching out to historians and exploring archives to unearth the history. Who participated in the building of the bridge? What impact did the bridge have on the community? And what industries were still tied to the Lord Creek when the bridge was built after World War I? Who had the political clout to get this structure built? And who had the foresight to build such a beautiful feat of engineering? There are personalities that reach out to us from the past, like Hallie Nelson, the talented woman welder who was brought up from Jersey City to weld lengths of cable 300 feet in the air as the bridge was under construction. This is now brought large crowds to see her work and was a media sensation at the time. Riverside, famously known as the Skilly Crop, was a chain driven ferry boat that connected Sliceburg and Kingston before the Wood Street Bridge was built. Once the bridge was open to traffic, she was rendered obsolete, but the owners carried on. The Skilly Crop was finally in the mission to your ending in a I think the problem is, is there's also audio coming from the TV. Yeah. Could we put the volume down on the TV? Because what's happening is that's coming around, moving into the <laughs> mic, and I think that's where the echo is coming from. As long as the mic keeps working on there, we should be okay. Yeah, that should be so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, you got to keep going. <laughs> it's only on 87. Yeah, just, just hold your finger on it. Yeah, go put it. Uh, just keep holding it. Hold, keep going. Okay, keep got you, my eye. Little more. Beautiful. Okay. All right, let's uh, everybody keep the fingers okay. crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes. 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 Okay. Find the right direction to cross those fastballs. In the course of interior restoration, we'll explore the modern science and engineering challenges to repair a badly created 20th century structure with 21st century technology. Our goal is to give the viewer a window into the engineering processes of renewing this beloved bridge. This is one current This one is, is being uh, you know, tucked into the community uh, and then such a significant spot is important. The project is preserving something that was built 100 years ago. So uh, I started learning about the craftsmanship and the and the workmanship in that bridge is tremendous. It's driven, it's driven in by hand. Uh, and there's tens of thousands of those. Old to the century came from this far north is not known. They're usually further south on much on major islands. The uniqueness of that in itself is also worthy of it being preserved. Are met a certain amount of weight and will stretch so much. So we needed to double check. We went back and did it again with rudimentary tape measures, making sure that the computer didn't have too much. Try, try, try. Uh, the tape measure doesn't work. This is that of that big kit. They all come together. Yes. 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 Right now, what's happening is, is that, that these, these large cables, they drape over the over the towers, go down, drape again. And you start to develop stresses in reverse of what it was designed for. So it's coming up and trying to come apart. The Woods Wood Bridge, along with a few other historic structures in King's Space, have been safe and wrecking ball. We'll meet citizens and government officials alike. People with a will and passion to revitalize this historic icon of the years of neglect. This is also an opportunity to reflect on how a few individuals can affect great change. I'm going to hold it there for a second. Uh, are anybody else's mics on? What we might be getting is, is your mic on? So again, I'm just trying to figure out how many people can be on the speaker and the Oh, no, this is the speaker. <laughs> but it would it'd be the same thing. So, but uh, it just occurs to me that maybe what it is we're picking.
picking up from the other over my experience. All right, then the other issue is that maybe we could send you all links because this is kind of painful. So maybe maybe that is the best way to do it. And I can give a little bit of an overview of what it is and, and hopefully hopefully you'll take the time to it's a short 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 uh, so just to give a little, I, I know I know many of you have a pretty good idea of what we're up to. Uh, we, you know, I, I, as many of you know, I lived at the foot of the Word Street Bridge for five years, and I fell in love with it. Uh, Bobby's a really good friend, was up visiting a lot, and we and we were always photographing it, and he started uh, drone uh, footage around the um, around the uh, the bridge uh, and got uh, connected up with the contractors and the people that were uh, that were working on it and we just it struck us that this was a really important project it's a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity yeah. to not only uh, to not only get the uh, yes thank you. Um, a once in a lifetime opportunity to to chronicle this extraordinary project, which is a uh, which is taking a badly corroded 20th century piece of, of incredible engineering and uh, renovating it with modern technology and science. And it turns out as we talk to people uh, who are involved in it uh, that this is a very uh, it's a, a very deep project. Um, so what we uh, what what we realized is we kind of stepped back and said, wait a second, this is you know this is Kingston has such a wealth of architectural jewels here, and that some of them and Transart being a really notable example uh, was something that has been under, you know, that it has just been neglected and now is being transformed. And that has happened. We have plenty of examples of what goes wrong, but we also have some examples of what goes right. And it's, it, it's part of the fabric and the, um, and the power of Kingston that we, uh, that we have this rich architectural and historical background to fall on. Now, a lot of us are very interested in the science and technology, but it always comes back to people. It comes back to, you know, who lives here, who built the bridges, who is involved with the renovation, but also, uh, you know, by looking at the people that have been involved in these projects, we get a really interesting view of a, of a city in process. And a city that hi Lisa, um, and a city that has um, that has really stepped up in many ways, uh, and so we want to highlight that. We want to celebrate that. Uh, now this project is going to be going on for two years, or thereabouts, and so um, yes, okay. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just want to give you a little, um, and I, what I will do is get in touch with you um, about the plans that we have with the, with the actual time capsule part of it. So the time capsule, we've already done one big project. We're going around the city and getting different organizations and different people to contribute to that. Um, so there'll be, there'll be updates, and uh, I hope you have a chance to watch the video. I'm sorry whatever is going on, uh, went on, but uh, I really uh, appreciate your, uh, your interest in this project, and please contact us if you have any questions. Yes, when you send us the package and the video, um, 
perhaps a budget. I mean, anything like, you know, you're, there's three points that I have here mm -hmm. and I'd be happy to, um, once you send that package, I'm, I'm making appointments with Peter. I must be his social secretary now, but I, I'd be happy to, you know, once you send the package forward that and ask for an audience with Peter. Um, and, you know, we'll send it to the commission and then, you know, I'd like they advise me, I'm sure that they've got a lot of points for you to. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I have a question on regard to your first uh, request about the stamp of approval. Um, exactly, that would be like a letter of support from the commission. Do you want the support from the city? Do you want the Department of Arts and Cultural Affairs? What exactly uh, is that stamp that you would like to have? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess part of it is our question is to you. What is that? Uh, obviously, having your your some sort of interest, okay. your your encouragement and your interest is is the main thing that we're looking at. If there is something that is official, that would be wonderful. We would we wouldn't know how to ask for that, but uh, but we'll talk about that. Well, just that maybe that's something that uh, we need to find out because I don't know if we. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that we've ever been asked. Uh, to to do this, but on the other hand, I don't know that there is any. Government. Yeah, exactly. To for an endorsement of a project like this yes. one, exactly. Right. Can I have one minute to? Because yes. there's a, another component. Only one. Only yes. one. Yes. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, 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 we have to rehearse this so that there'll be three minutes. I know. Uh, I have two minutes. I can do this in a minute. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the other major part of our project is when we realized this, you know, the idea of renovating a 20th century bridge and what the 21st century uh, technology stuff. This gave this particular story the kind of legs that we could have uh, PBS attracted to it. So what we're, our ultimate goal for distributing this project, you know, uh, Mel and I, we really think this is a wonderful community. You know, what's even the fact that you have an arts council? This is a very progressive uh, community, really trying to take on the social issues, really trying to uh, make it a mecca for arts. But uh, so we see this as an opportunity to approach PBS. This story has really the components that PBS would want. We know we can get uh, it shown on the local PBS, and we're talking about WMHT. Mm -hmm. PBS up here. Uh, in the back of the package, you'll see their map of coverage. So it's all of Eastern New York, you get Massachusetts, uh, parts of Massachusetts and Connecticut. Basically, about a quarter million viewers a week, plus they have a radio station. So part of what we want to do is design a multiple, multiple, let me try that in English, a multi platform uh, uh, project where we monthly will be. Uh, making small little uh, progress reports and things, and we want to delve into the history and the, the social stuff going on in Kingston. Uh, we want to find a venue to show that. We haven't, you know, there's Hutsey, there might be something we can do with PBS. We're going to work closely with PBS so that our show is modeled and structured to fit in to their programming. Our ultimate hope. Uh, and we think that this, the story of the bridge, lets us hang our hat on this, lets us bring this where we could even possibly get distributed nationally. And then we'd have 180 million plus people having a chance to see Kingston. In other words, we want to shine a light on this, on what's going here. We, we designed this with mine of helping to bring in tourism. Kingston, this is a great place. <laughs> It really yeah. is, and, and you guys will invest. So I don't have to tell that, but mm -hmm. so basically, our, our idea of yours as this project goes along is to uh, work closely with PDS uh, to create a program that will, uh, in two years, will be able to go out that way, yeah. and a series, a monthly series, that will highlight different folks, different structures, as Neville had said, the other architectures. And plus the spirit, you know, the movers and the. the so it's people. not only about the bridge. The bridge gives us that that that's a similar with PDFs. And it's a great story. That's a great story. Mm -hmm. That will attract people. Uh, it lets us tell this about the community that this bridge serves. It also lets us use the bridge as a metaphor. Is that a minute? 
So just so this is our ultimate goal is really we also want to try and help raise this community, get the, let the world yeah. know about this, what we're doing here, and we believe with this story we have a very good shot. Can I ask a question about your connection to New York State who's doing work? Have you been able to connect with them? Talk we are. about this project. Yes. This last day, yes. So if, if you actually got a chance to the video. <laughs> They, we've been allowed access uh, to go on. We've done some shooting on the bridge itself, uh, interviewing some of them. We are talking with the uh, DOT now. They like it. We have to give them a formal proposal of you know exactly how we would make yeah. that happen so that we're not disturbing them or stopping workers, but still <laughs> catching the story. And the idea of this, this would be a documentary that would catch the story just at a realistic point. You know, We're not going to have a spokesperson. Uh, Neville and I, our style is to let people talk, you know, and we craft our narrative just from first person. Is there a New York State Historical Society oh. archives, all that, right? There is, right? Yes. Yeah. So, New York State so, so, Have you thought about connecting with them to see if you can get them tied into it? Yeah, we're, yes, we have a long list of people okay. that, we're, that we're reaching out to that we want to work with. Because again, you know, some of the, uh, Archival imagery that you're seeing, which we love, which also really, you know, history, science, engineering, social issues. All of this is the mission of PBS. Hmm. And uh, and I think, you know, we're, we're designing a show that will do that, uh, that, will, that will speak to all of these things. You know, again, with the, the bridge would be the, the, what we're hanging our hat on in the main. And Taylor Brooke would be really important. Excuse me. Taylor Brooke, who's. Yes. Uh, the story yeah. yes absolutely so i guess that once we have the video on the packet and as uh kate mentioned before you know to help you give you the referrals ideas and you know all the other things maybe also down the road it would be great to have an update of seeing where you are at and you know and maybe by then we'll figure we'll out how to and maybe we'll figure out the technology. Yeah, but anyway, let's stay in touch and yeah. Thank you. We're, we're, we are all connected, so that's, yes. good. that's good. Yes. Now, thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you very much for the introduction. Yeah, really. Considering our project. Thank you. Oh, we'll do like this. <laughs> <laughs> any, any comment, uh, guys online? Any comment, any question? And are you gonna are you gonna make the appointment with Peter? <laughs> you know, that's the best thing to do. <laughs> we might have turned her volume down. I think we did. Yes, yeah, we did. Oh yeah, there's no volume. But then, yeah, can you say oh, something? That's true. So we don't have She's, there. She's okay. It turns oh, back up. Okay. okay. And what about Julio and Dominic are muted too? Yes, they 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 muted their own mics. When they want to speak, I guess they will. Okay. Good. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. You, do you want to test? And can you say something so we can see if we can hear you? Hello. Sure. I'm here. Okay. 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 I'm Hi. here. Uh, yes, Hello. and thank you, Neville and Bobby. I'm sorry uh, the presentation was a little um, like the twilight zone out here, but um, <laughs> we'll look forward to the, you know, you're sending us the link to the work you've done so far. Yeah, it looks really beautiful. I look forward to seeing yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good idea. Great, great. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. So let's see how it goes with the second presentation. Yes, sir. Should we get Lisa's vote on the minutes so that it's official? Did you read the minutes for the? I did. Approve? Okay, please say out loud. Yay. I approve the minutes. So yeah. So we have the minutes. Thank you, Peter. That's great. That's great. I don't know if I to, well, I will leave that for the end. Okay. So Maggie and Greer? Perfect. Now, let me start all over again. I can't wait to hear the sound. No, this is not the sound. Large sound. So it's like, did you remember what he said? Because he's gone now. Chair. So I think uh, you need to make her a co-host, right? She is. Okay. 
And then you should be able to share your screen. Okay. Yeah, sorry. You know, I, I may start asking guests to bring the, you know, the old-fashioned projectors. <laughs> it works so wonderfully when it You're works, right. but when it doesn't, it's like, oh my God. thinking. <laughs> Did you do something else with us? Because I remember. I know we were up first. Yeah, that uh, yeah, was up. But now it's, I mean, the, the clock is, the clock is ticking. Like mm -hmm. well, it took a few moments last time, too. Yeah, it yeah. Before it engaged. Yeah. Did you have your, do you want to just go until she gets hers up now? Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go yeah. again. Ask. <clears throat> You says you were sharing screen. And I am. <laughs> but maybe it's not the right screen. Oh yeah. It looks like it's not the right screen. Oh. Maybe that's not there. That way. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Okay. Well, we are uh I'm Greer Smith, founder and, and CEO of and Art and Cultural Service. And this is Maggie Inge, our development director, who you all know and love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've been here in the uh, Mid Hudson Valley since 1996, and sort of a well kept secret until we started working on the corner of Henry and Furnace, and we were a secret no more. Our mission is uh, we use the transformative power of art to advance and preserve the art history of popular cultural people of African ancestry. Cultivated communities where all voices are heard, understood, and valued. And this is going to change as we move into our home because being on that corner presents a whole nother perspective and responsibility. And we're well aware of that. And our board and, and I am going to, we're already starting to talk about what we're going to do to uh, make our presence even more impactful. As you all know, Henry Street had been sitting here uh, for a while, and uh, we took ownership in 2009 and began working on it with the grant from the, which was now, which was then the uh, Governor's Environmental Protection Fund grant to start the restor historic restoration. That is now what is rolled into the infamous CFA. So uh, that's how we began this process. Uh, in case you don't remember, that's what it looked like. <laughs> and um, we worked with a wonderful team. Alan Bayer, who you all know, I think, uh, is our architect of record and it is a wizard. He's been able to, uh, wherever I thought of, he's been able to recreate. This is how we're looking now. Uh, the Bergen Matthews House will become our space for historical exhibitions, gallery space for works of art, and our administrative offices at the top floor, which was the attic, will contain our archives. We have been working for the last 20 some years on the African presence in the Mid Hudson Valley, and much of that information is there, along with an extensive vinyl collection of, of jazz and, and books that are not in local libraries. It will be available by appointment or study, and we will do in a lot of our humanities programs from the material that we have in that space. We were, during the process, we worked with the young people at the uh, Boys and Girls Club, and those were the murals that uh, were created. They uh, are now, we still have them, they were in pristine condition, and they are part of, when you see the building, we've used them in other places in the building. We did not want their work and our work for those 10 years to go without being noticed. 
We provide year-round programming that builds communities, addresses social and critical issues, brings art and culture into the life of the Hudson Valley. We have been supported by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Humanities and the New York State Council on the Arts. That is what allowed us to bring the quality of the program that we continue to bring. This was uh, Storing Pride and Culture, Legacy and Tradition. This was a program, an art program at the Kingston Center, SUNY All Star. Another exhibition, we bought Faith Ringgold here uh, for the first time ever. And this is someone looking at a quilt by the wonderful Faith Ringgold. In 2002, during the uh, quadricentennial of the city of Kingston, we decided to uh, do an exhibition. The mayor at the time was T.R. Gallo. And I was somewhere, and um, I said in a meeting, we've got to say more than Sojourn Truth slept here. So because I said that, uh, we, we were able to mount a tremendous exhibition on um, the African presence in the Mid-Hudson Valley. And with the help of more funding from humanities, we turned part of it into a traveling exhibition. And now, I don't know if everybody knows Big Joe Fitz. That's Big Joe Fitz looking at this happened to be installed at the time at the person house. Uh, we also used to have it um, in the county office, county office building before tourism took the space and we had the exhibition and then we would bring it in there once a year. When the exhibition itself was up physically, it was in five locations because there was no place big enough to house the tremendous story that it was. Um, this part of the exhibition, Free and Half Free, was in the Johnson Museum. Friends of Historic Kingston allowed us to take everything out and we put stuff there. The other location was um, a visitor center over here on Clinton. Um, the other location was the deep, deep listening space. And it was some, the other place was, where else did we have it? I don't remember. But, And yeah, this was that deep listening place, space. This is Walter Patrice. Walter Patrice um, played for the Millbrook Giants. Baseball was the unifying factor here in the Hudson Valley. Um, no matter uh, what color you were, what stripes you wore, uh, baseball brought everybody to the mound and they were able to get along. And Walter Patrice, who has recently passed. just passed mm -hmm. away, was tickled pink that um, we were able to do that. In this Making a Living and Making a Community um, exhibition, we had the original Green Book here, um, and we still have the original sign from Pegalay Bates. It was hand, it was hand painted. We have that in our archive, and, and many, many treasures. I'm trying to go fast, because we've been really busy. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't wanna uh, use the time. One of the most important things about our work here is our ability to massage the intellect of the community. Um, we, this, this, this brother and his son, who had never been into an experience like this before, um, talking to a historian with pride, and that made us really, really say, this is what we're, this is what we're doing, this is what we do here. The jewel in our crown is Jazz in the Valley. Jazz in the Valley started out as an afternoon of art and music at the West, what was then the West Park Winery. We've got old timers here. You must have known Lou Fiore. Uh, Lou Fiore uh, loved jazz, and I was looking for a place to have some music. And he said, well, Greer, if you can have it on a Sunday, you can have the place for free. That's why Jazz in the Valley is on a Sunday, <laughs> because, because, of Lou, because of Lou Fiore 22 years later. It's, it's, it's still on Sunday. Lou uh, uh, sold it. After church. Uh, no, during, <laughs> this is church. This is church. Uh, this is church. Uh, church. Yeah, this is church. And when he decided to sell, we, we moved. We moved to... Um, no. No. It's an even path. Um, and Williams Lake. Williams Lake. We moved to Williams Lake, 
and uh, then they sold Williams Lake. <laughs> and, uh, we moved to the Hudson Valley Resort and Spa, which was formerly the Granite. And actually, this is this is there, the legendary uh, Hugh Masekela. And we outgrew that space. And it was actually Ernie Bruno said, um, you know, what are you going to do now? So I, he said, my cousin is the mayor of Poughkeepsie. So we're in Poughkeepsie. <laughs> so, uh, and this is the this is at. Uh, West Park, what was then West Park, Miami, which is now Maple Leaf. This was the wonderful NA Jazz Master, uh, Ahmed Jamal. This was very special because we got a, a grant to commission him to write a piece about the Hudson Valley. He was living in Stanfordville at the time and sitting in his kitchen, looking out the window, looking at the vista of the Hudson Valley. He said, uh, wow, this is picture perfect. That was the name of the piece he created. And mm -hmm. it was debuted at the first, what was now Jazz in the Valley. At, in Ulster County, and this is also a wonderful uh, Jimmy Cobb. Uh, this is not the only jazz festival, but we are the longest running in, in, in this county, in this region. And it's a wonderful day. Uh, we've been, I should say, and we've been not fortunate. The New York Times, we were the last program that they covered um, outside of the metro area when they came up and looked at uh, what we were doing here with Jazz in the Valley. And that's uh, uh, it's just some of the press that we've uh, garnered over the years. And the audience loves it. We have a core audience that um, has followed us. To, it was like a movable piece. They, they've been with us everywhere we've gone. In, in January in uh, 2021, last year, I was honored to be considered uh, a jazz hero by the Jazz Journalists Association. Um, that's, that, yeah, yeah, it's, it's national recognition. It's a big deal. Um, I'm, I'm just a worker bee. I hadn't even thought about it. And um, them doing that was uh, really a wonderful thing. We also um, were time with bringing the uh, jazz musicians into the schools, which was really, really important, particularly when it comes to Kingston, because of the, uh, not the, the full engagement of young people of color. Um, they're still a black, black and man. Uh, so we, what we did was, um, and the Dyson Foundation was, uh, was doing that, we had to turn it into something else to get people involved. It was a full out, concert as an assembly program. The principal at the time was very forward thinking. Uh, so we were able to do that and also do a clinic after for the, the people that were in the band. Yep. So this is uh, Javon Jackson, who uh, is our artistic director. And he, uh, well, you can see the kids are hanging on his every word. So, Kids. And here, yeah, here. Oh, that, 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 that's, oh, that's, where, that, that's where it went. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, this is, oh my God, about two minutes. Okay, yeah. okay. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> On August 21st, be there, be square. This, oh. this, is, this, is, this is what, this is what's happening. This is this year's, this is this year's concert. Uh, Buster Williams, Craig Harris, Regina Carter, Camille Thurman. It is a wonderful, afternoon. Uh, we also do film forums. We had the opportunity to show Maya Angelou and Still I Rise before it aired on PBS. We got the hookup. And this next Saturday also, Buster Williams will have his, he'll come in early and he'll be there for a talk back and we're going to show his film, his documentary, Based to Infinity. That can mean hacking. Excellent. Next Saturday. What is going to be there? Um, the Creative Placemaking Institute is an, uh, is a creation of NEA and LISC. Creative uh, Placemaking is uh, an initiative that um, elevates key community assets and issues, voices of residents, local history and cultural infrastructure, envisioning new possibilities in the futures, connected communities, and via physical spaces and new relationships. This institute 
had it was an, its inaugural installation was in 2019. There was a call out nationally. They narrowed it down to 200 organizations. They wanted six organizations to participate in this inaugural institute. Trans Art was one of the six. We were beyond excited about that. And we were in our partner, oh, me. <laughs> and our partner was uh, the County of Ulster, and I think you recognize that guy. <laughs> yes. And we uh, we were like Fred and Ginger. We 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 stole the show. We, <laughs> but at this uh, at this institute, we used this to workshop our Pinkster celebration. That's why Pinkster was able to happen and happen in the way that it did and receive the kind of respect and uh, participation that it did. Because we had the time, we had a planning grant from NEA to plan. 80% of any success is, is planning, and then we were able to yeah. have the implementation. And uh, for those of you, I think everybody in here knows uh, that uh, Pinkster is a reclamation of our historic African and Dutch Americans. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it illuminates the unique, nearly forgot tradition in the Hudson Valley. The celebration underscores our shared history of the region's residents and provides an opportunity to develop an economic driver for the county by generating cultural tourism. As I think everybody in here knows, cultural tourism is the, is the fastest growing part of the tourism dollar. African American tourism is the fastest growing part of that dollar. Currently $6 billion. Yeah. We um, are looking at Pinkster as an economic driver and an introduction to local residents that are not normally involved in what hospitality is and what that means. We, with this program, we are creating an identity for this area. Folks want to come. It's got to be something that make people get in their car and drive here, get on a bus and drive here. And that's what happened during Pinkster. More than half of the participants were not from here. This little girl, I don't know where she came from, but she was right in it. It was not It was not staying. It was never, not staying. Yeah, she was totally, totally amazing. And, and I love this shot because our emphasis this year was um, to introduce folks to the people that first came here with the Dutch West Indian Company. And they, they came from the areas now called Congo and Angola. And this dance company, just, just the pose with Peter Stuyvesant, I thought, said it yeah. all. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so, if anybody, you could, this belongs to us. If anybody wants to borrow this photo, you can. And, and, and there was a wonderful woman, um, who's name was uh, always say wrong, Axia, Axia, who plays, uh, who portrays, uh, who, so, 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 and uh, spoken low Dutch was the right size, all of that, and she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. The next big thing for us, yeah, the Creators Rebuild New York. Everybody knows about Creative Rebuild New York. Everybody went after it. We got it. We will have four people that will be working with us on salary for two years, and we are bringing a wealth of knowledge and uh, creativity into the community. Christopher Dean Sullivan is up here, wonderful bassist that many of you may know. Mala Waldron is a vocalist, pianist. Her father was Mal Waldron, Billy Holiday's band leader and arranger. Her aunt, godmother, was Billy Holiday. Craig, Craig Harris recently scored the uh, musical, did the musical score for the Academy Award nominated film. Brutus. Judas and the Black Messiah, Bob, Chief Bob Neil Clark, Harry, Harry Belafonte is percussionist for 20 years, Randy West is per, for percussionist for another 20. That's me, and this is our executive assistant, Corrine yeah. Rodriguez. Open in this fall. Come yeah. on, come on. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I just want you to know that I'm glad you're, uh, you're here. Um, a lot of what you do is, is reflective of this master plan, and um, I know we were talking about jazz 
in the valley here in Kingston. I'm looking forward to working with you on Pinkster next year, starting now. Yes. And when you open, please let us all know because we want to be at that ribbon cutting. It's been a long time. And thank you for what you've done to that, with that building. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> well, I, I have a question because, you know, it's like the, the regular question. So well, it's great that you made this presentation for us. Many of the things that you presented to us, uh, I guess that we knew, but it's always good to see them all together because then, you know, you can feel the magnitude of the thing. But then my question for you would be, how can the uh, Arts Commission support you? What are you expecting from the Commission? Nothing. Oh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Maggie, Maggie is like, <laughs> Actually, some of the things I was talking about in terms of this only works with uh, with partnerships. Yes, we want to consider the commission our partner going forward. Um, the the physical place that we will be inhabiting is can only hold with so much. So we are looking to be able to do things in other places. Like when Rich Gore was at the was the manager of. Who you, I'm sure, know. Rich Gordon is the manager of um, the Senate House in, uh, in 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 Newburgh and the five in the five sites. He allowed us to go in and take everything out because he knew we knew what we were doing, and we were able to recreate uh, the barber shops, the the hair salons, the the, the migrant kitchens, all that. Could, we were able to do all of that because this is what we bring. This is we are professionals at what we do. All of our work, we don't do events, we do programming. It's steeped in the humanities and scholarship. And I want everybody to understand the, the difference. difference. Yes. We no. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that really distinguishes the work of trans art is that we don't as much um, hire local talent as we inspire local talent. We can, you know, we are about bringing a level of excellence and world class artists here, so that people can be exposed yes. beyond what is available in Kingston. Mm -hmm. So, while we're not, um, you know, so excellence is what we're about. So whether it's historical scholars, fine artists, whatever it is, you can count on us to be bringing a level up. And that's, and that's the partnership, because I want everyone to be assured that folks will come. It's If we don't have the economic driver that we need to have here, and with all of the influx of people from all of the other, you know, and then everybody's got the dread, the G word, gentrification is going on, mm -hmm. you know. But if there's something here that folks that live here can be a part of, people have to be trained and, and understand what hospitality is. We, we're, we're prepared to do that. I should not have to go to New York City to get people to run my stage. I should, I should not have to, you know what I mean? So we, I, we, we're about trying to get that level of support here from the community so folks can be engaged and feel like they're really part of this. Um, I did a, a tour a while back and when, when Pat Courtney Strong and Lester were still here, and you know their world travels. They know what the deal is. Mm -hmm. And Lester is the one that said, um, you know, we're uh, you're our Schomburg. I said, yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we are. The, the reason why the um, the the archive is taken off. Someone that comes to Jazz in the Valley looked at our music bill and said, oh, I didn't know you guys were doing that. I can help you. So he's installed a fancy smancy turntable and we've got a little listening booth so people can access this vinyl that we have and do this kind of you know and then he's also taking he's also donated you know security system and some other stuff so you know this is you know this is here this is who's in the audience um lisa lisa's husband lisa mm -hmm. tourism Lisa, oh, Lisa Berger, Berger. Lisa, Lisa Berger came to jazz in the valley last year for the first time with her husband and her husband looked at her and said, you've been making me drive to Montreal and we had this right here. So um, this, is, this is the support we need. This, this does not happen 
Uh, people are tired of driving to Newport I mean, and it's and it's crowded. People are tired of driving to Saratoga. This is this is right here, but it does not happen without the support. Yes, we want you to intercede with the business community. Um, the business, you know, people are coming here, we're making great deals. They need to kick something back. Somebody to support our program so we can train folk in hospitality and how to deal with yeah. tourists when they come. But we can we can bring the horse to the border, but there's got to be something else here besides us to make them drink. So we, we want to do this. We were able to work during Pinkster with the Roundout Growers Association. Mm -hmm. We gave away flowers. We want someone to incentivize the, the farmers to do this. Then after that, we took pots of flowers, every every porch, every window, every everything in Kingston should have flowers on it during Pinkster. People go to Washington, D.C. in April not to see the monuments. They go to see the cherry blossoms. See they need to come here during Pinkster to and see the flowers, it's whatever the flower is at the time. Just, That's the, the first ask. Like the is, and all the yeah, exactly. Yeah. The first ask is to help us work with the, work with the flower, all the growers. Then we had the produce bowl. We had produce that we gave away um, during Pinkster. Um, so we need to work with the local farmers so folks can come, as, and, and, and that's an easy one. Folks will come, they can do that. This, this is another thing. kind of another form of tourism. Sure. Agri -tourism. Agri -tourism. It's fastly developed. And it's, it's, it's in that in between time, you know, right at the beginning of spring, right, you know, when folks start moving around, it's, it's the best time folks are, Folks are ready to, you know, get out of the house. They can come to Kingston. It's beautiful. Because Pentecost always comes at that right time. Yeah. And this is the kind of, and we'll, we'll have a formal proposal and plan. You know, that's that's what we need. I'd like to, you know, the business community to sit here and, you know, say, we got it. We understand. It's worth it. Yeah. I'll be working side by side with you. Yeah, that's great. And also, I'm going to take something that you mentioned when you move to, when you install, I don't know to say move, but when you are settled uh, mm -hmm. within Henry Street, definitely you are in the heart of the Latino community in Kingston. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that that's where you are going to also ex expand. So I wanted to know that the Alianza Cultura de Kingston exists and precisely share, at least so far, with you the idea of not putting events, but programming. Absolutely. And we have done already two programs. We are planning for two more this fall. And we will because, you know, we are all busy, but we are trying to keep it. And it would be great to see how we can also, uh, now I'm not talking about the commission, but the Alianza, how we can partner for programming because we want to keep the traditions and the culture not just the party, although the parties are great, but, you know, there is tons of people doing party. We don't need to make parties. Uh, so, but, but also with Pinkster. But what you missed that during Pinkster okay. is um, Alan Fosai from yeah. who did Bomba Kikmena, and we it is it's part of who we are because Bomba comes from Congo, and we and we told that story. I was and going we want to expand that story. Yeah, you know what you what you call Pinkster. In different countries of Latin America, mm -hmm. we call it different. And mm -hmm. one of the programmings that we did, the very first that we did, were the mask of the Diablos Danzante de Yare. Mm -hmm. That is a celebration that in my home country, Venezuela, that's mm -hmm. what we do during Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And it's the dancing devils. And it's also a syncretism between the African culture, the indigenous culture, yes. And then the alienation of the church. Absolutely. So I think that there are. It so, may. anyway, I eventually would like to connect with you guys. It's just that the time is already. <laughs> but I, you know, besides what uh, Pete say, uh, obviously we want, we want to support all the organizations in Kingston. Uh, I want to thank you, guys. And, thank you. and Maggie, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. And do you have more? That's it? I just have to <laughs> thank you. Well, if not, this is for the one on the 21st, right? Next Sunday. Mm -hmm. it's perfect. And uh, we, we always close out. We always, you know, acknowledge the, the uh, African roots in um, 
in in Latin music, and this year is um, is uh, Joaquin Pozo, who is the so he says <laughs> nephew of uh, a Chano Pozo. So uh, great, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> but, uh, but it's always wonderful. And yes, we historically we always do those linkages. That's great because that that is the whole point. We are more mm -hmm. Western popular culture would not exist. Without, you yeah. have to go to the root, and, exactly. and we're the root, and <laughs> just talk about that's right. all of that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, thank, thank you, you. Thank, you thank you very, you. very much. Yeah. Keep, keep on with the good work, and you know, I'm gonna keep. We're, we're gonna keep connecting uh, with everybody. Uh, so that's great. Thank you, thank you, guys. There online, any question, any something that, any something, anything that you would like to add, ask, or something. I just want to uh, you know, thank, uh, thank uh, uh, for the presentation. It was very informative, and it just shows me the, the potential for partnerships and programs in Kingston. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Well, you can stay. We are not going to talk about any sensor. No, <laughs> so I think that we have three points. I'm going to defer. I'm going to request to defer. Okay, perfect. For the three rest of the three items, because we only have that amount of time. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be very fast with my fellow commissioners. Did everybody read the rules and procedures? We are gonna adjust the penalty. I don't know. It's not a penalty, but you know the waiting time to one hour. After you leave, in case that there's opportunity. To one, hour? one hour? One hour. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm tired. One yeah, one hour. <laughs> <laughs> one hour. <laughs> yeah, as I said, that, you know, the one year makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what we did. And if there is any other thing, you know, I would like to approve the document yeah. and start yeah. growing on well, that. I, I edited it uh, in, in uh, it seems like three years ago, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, no, it was last month, it's just that, but that's okay. Well, here's my question. I would like to uh, to move um, for a vote for the approval. And I think we should, I'm, I'm sorry, Mary, yes. I think we should have it in front of us, uh, at this weird thing. At the moment? The rules of procedure. You know, it should be passed out, we should be able to leaf through it, and then, uh, and then we should uh, have it then we should be able to approve it. It's, like to have it free? It's, it's too important to, you know, to not. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't, maybe I'm being silly. Well, that's what I was asking, if there were something, because I, I, I think that we all agree in, in, in that period of time of one year instead of three. Uh, and besides that, I didn't get any other comment. Oh, I had another. You have other I had comments. I have yes. other comments. Yeah, but the comments, I mean, uh, we took those comments, but what oh, I understood, yeah, what I understood okay. from yeah. the comments that the only thing that I was like, wait, 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 was that, because it was more like a question or something like that. So I'm going to agree yes. with more. Yeah. Because I think to send up. if we have final clean copies, mm -hmm. we can take 30 minutes from the next meeting and actually just go through the document all with each other, just so we're all in the same place. This was, was the there was a question about this one. Exactly. 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 There was a question about that one. Yeah. And because we're, we're so we're going to have the room uh, together. Perfect. And then a hard copy, right? Yeah, hard copy. And to have a hard copy. I know it's 19th century to say hard copy. But we can probably do it in 30 minutes. We can just go through, you know, yep. this, 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 this. Uh, council. No, we don't need that. Oh, we don't. We no, because that's what I, yeah, it's not the resolution that we are changing. Oh, okay. It's we are creating what the resolution exactly. say we were authorized to create. SOP. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because the resolution is going to be. That's a whole other. Yeah, that's another that's animal. Fine. So, and also, once we have this, we can keep adding, and I will maybe suggest that, you know, every year, if we could review, Please. just to see yeah, if it's working, it's not working, what we need to add or what we need to take away. Between yeah. now and then, I really think we should look into the legality of actually having votes. On About the, the meetings, meetings, yeah. Because I don't think that, I don't think that we can do that, but, but 
Yeah, yeah, because um, Keith, you mentioned that eventually we could we, make we could make that decision and run it by Barra yes. and see what happened. But and if it's the city decisions that you're making, we can run it. If she's been bogged down by okay, you know, so we're gonna so look so into that right. just in case. Yeah. But if, if we can, if we can, great. But if yeah. not, yeah, we know perfect. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys. So that's one on my side. So we will defer the report and. Is Anne still there, right? Yes. Yeah, she's still there. Okay, Anne. I think that I have you also. Do we have updates with the with the with the committee with the program? Uh, with are you are you talking about uh, Harriet Tubman? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Um. I can give you a brief update, and then I'm going to turn it over to Susie Lynn. Uh, we're, we're really in a very good place right now uh, as far as moving forward. We're meeting every two weeks, and um, we put a steering committee together with the county. Uh, the county has been extremely generous and has given um, $3,000 more towards programming, and uh, the committee... Uh, which meets every two weeks is actively looking for uh, more donations for programs. We're also finding that a lot of the arts organizations in the community are using some of their budgets uh, to help support education um, around this event. So uh, with this, I'll turn it over to Susie because she's really um, doing a great job administratively leading this and and also um just in terms of listening and and being very attuned so susie i'll turn it over to you perfect thank you okay susie you are on well um we have a save the day code card um oh great that you know everybody perfect. take please take some with you and help them out oh, um, i met with ty and uh drew today to talk about the, um, the incoming and the outgoing of the sculpture. So we we're putting together a schedule. Uh, it's going to be pretty simple, but you know we're going to start in Harambe and then come to the uh, the county building. The statue will be placed, and then we'll have um, you know, some you know, speakerage. And um, <laughs> is that a word? Speaker, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> um, I thought that I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, and I, I do want to talk to you, Kit. Um, I told them the idea of doing walking to the old Dutch church. I was not. He he wants to reconsider that. Well, it's fine. Just yeah, you know, when when everybody decides, let us know, mm -hmm. and we'll block off whatever needs to be blocked off. And, okay. Yeah. So it needs to be involved, but you know, Anne said that you know when when you all determine what it is, you know where it is, how yeah. it is, then you know down the road. Yeah. So, um, so do we have like a draft of what are the programs that are being developed? Okay, or this, is, this is just okay. We're okay. just talking about the logistics of, of the coming and the, the going. coming and the going. Okay, yeah. great. whatever programming happens in between is up to individual it's people. people that make it. Okay. You know, like I know you guys have been talking about doing stuff, and mm -hmm. and you know the draws talking about you know there's all kinds of people talking about doing different things. I created a Google Calendar where things have been entered. Uh, so if anybody else is planning programming, you know, please. Put it there. Uh, yeah, I can send you all the link to it, and you can take a look at what's going on. Can we have, if, even if we are not submitting anything, can yeah, we have no, access I'll, to I'll that? Send it to the commission. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're we have a fundraising letter. We're at thirteen thousand right now. Um, I've asked people if, if they do want to be considered to have a, uh, a stipend or something for their programming, if they could please send me what their budget is, and what they, you know, in, in a perfect world, what they'd like to have. Uh, and I don't know, that's kind of it. Um, I have good news. Um, <clears throat> we were talking, I was talking to Ty and Oliver King about portraying Frederick Douglass. Right. And, you know, he needs about two, two, fifth, right. right? We talked about yes. that. 
So I'm talking to Margie about grant writing modules. And I talked to her about Frederick Douglass and she said, you know, she can put up the money. And, you know, if it's raised and she can get reimbursed, fine. So that at least is covered. Good. So now it's a matter of building programming around that. I'm kind of, you know, because I belong to the Truth and Reconciliation um, Advisory Committee. And we were just looking at slave wills. We were looking at a lot of stuff. This is, rep, you know, reparations. This is really deep uh, black history research revolved around slavery. And I was thinking, you know, it could be in the Common Council because Oliver has this idea about addressing legislators around this time because the one in Canandaigua that that um, the speech was addressed to the legislators. I was going to say he was an orator. Oh yeah. yeah, and that was a deep one, and it went to the legislators. You know, the and and it could be like a Q and A. So. We can talk about it, but I just want you to know that Margie said that she'd be glad to cover for it. Okay, cool. Um, and so what okay. Anne has charged everybody in the committee with is going out and getting at least one donor. Um, and, you know, we're, we're hoping to you know, continue to raise funds. Um, but does the, the costs are covered already or not? Because I got lost with the budget. And I still the cost of the, of the statue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's. So we are we are good with that. Oh yeah. These are programming costs. Actually. Yeah, programming. Yeah, we have. Um, it's it's basically it's about five. I think you know, including printing, it's the statue itself is about five thousand. Uh, then with print, insurance and all the transportation, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, and then with programming, marketing, yeah, yeah that mm -hmm. kind of thing. We're, we're going to do a program um, that will, uh, you know, we'd like to have like a, make a little, I don't know, waterproof box that will sit next to Harriet Tubman and you could be, we'll be able to take the program out of it so people can have it. But we should also have an XR code. Oh God, I hate those QR codes. QR. I know, but that's not for me, or you. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> you remember those other for things? For the people who use it. For the people who use it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And I, another question that I have. So she's coming November 1st. Yes. And she's leaving? Well, it's scheduled December 31st. Um, so we're going to have a New Year's Eve party for her. We could, <laughs> yes. Uh, we didn't talk too much about the, the <laughs> exit today because we... Uh, you know, it took us quite a while to get through the entrance stuff, uh, but that's next. We're gonna we're gonna meet for okay. every week for the next few weeks to see, you know, how we can iron things out. And so, um, if it's New Year's Eve, um, I just was told <laughs> that um, Old Dutch will be hosting Ars Corrales, and I don't know if anybody went, but I was a presenter in the 2019. We all come from somewhere. Um, presentation that they did on the ARC, yeah. it was amazing. So I'm trying to get in touch with Barbara, see what they've got going on. Okay. Because that could be a beautiful closeout. Did you say that? What did you say about Tyrone and Old Dutch? It, it, he has, and he said he he loves Rob and he loves the Old Dutch Church, but he feels that he really wants to focus on the statue and where it is, and that we for that entrance there. Um, because there's that relationship between the Dutch and the black community that he he kind of wants to stay away from the Dutch church that that evening. Um, oh, that what? Because we have um, not not they want, yeah, no, 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 not yeah. stay away from programming and okay. stuff like that. Just from that evening, because I know you had talked about doing a, a parade of of people going to the Dutch church singing spirituals and things like that. That was after finding north. After the program. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was mistaken. I thought it was after that night after the installation of the sculpture. No. Then I. It's going to be installed on, on the side of the county building, county right? Building. Yeah. By Main Street. Yeah. No, by um. By fair. fair. It's on fair. In front. Of in the front of the building. building. In front of where, where the veterans. As you're looking at the building in the veterans. Uh huh. It's on the left side. It's on the left side. Fair and Main. Oh, okay. Corner of Fair and Main. But this is more basically on Fair, not on Main. It's yeah. really in the corner. Okay. It's really the exactly. Corner. Yeah. Okay. So. And I'll just say, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, 
that the Midtown Arts District is uh, administ receiving and administering funds, et cetera, um, in an unofficial fiscal sponsorship capacity. Um, so I'm also on the steering committee to make sure that the, the finances are in order. Um, as the Ulster County funds are reimbursed funds, um, so any any expenses incurred can be reimbursed through uh, invoice that we would be. So just we would be working out that logistic yeah. a lot together, um, and uh, also receiving the donations. I mean, time had suggested that we sell advertising for the program. I said, if you want to take that on, you go right ahead. It's a lot of traffic. And I just said, it's too much for, you know, um, me to handle. Um, but so we're just going to go with, you know, straight out fundraising, no selling ads. No, yeah. um, Anne, you have anything to add? Um, I, I had word that Harambe would pay for Frederick Douglass. So there are two people that want to pay for um, him. Well, um, Tyrone said that um, when he wrote to Oliver, it would be a small stipend. All right. Well, um, that was in a uh, prior meeting I had with him. So, yeah. yeah. But it's out there. Don't worry. We'll, we'll definitely find the money for that. Well, we have it. Um, there was kind of email exchanges between Tyrone and Oliver. I was CC'd on it. And... Um, Albert, um, he was offering a small stipend. So mm -hmm. after that exchange, I just, you know, I was talking to Margie, like I said, in an unrelated um, topic and mentioned that. And she said that she had the money to front. So it's great. Done. She's, and she's they, they're funding if, if the money's raised. Oh. Yeah. The library is uh, funding their programs. They're not asking for money. And um, the Bardavan too, uh, that's a lift for them because that's would typically cost $3,000. So um, there are people who are really working um, together to make this a really interesting and um, dynamic opportunity for the community to um, reflect and educate and have conversations that need to be had. And, uh, to celebrate, but also to look at our past and look at our future and talk about who we wanna be. So when we look at the arts cultural plan, um, I really think we need to think of something that Greer said earlier, uh, let's be a baseball team. You know, we may not all agree in the same ways about things, but I think we can all agree that uh, and work as a team to really lift and lift our community and use this as an incredible educational opportunity. So uh, that's my final comment. So I just wanted to add one thing on to that. And um, I told the committee that I went to Auburn a couple of weeks ago and saw the statue and spoke with the interpretation staff there. They've done very little in terms of programming. So I think we should feel really proud. I mean, this is robust programming related to the statue. They have the statue there and it's outside of the Harry Do you think she lived there? It, I mean, it's, it, it's beautifully set up and looks great, but they just haven't done a whole series of programs like we're talking about doing here. So it's really quite amazing what we're doing with the statue. I'd like, a, that's great, Peter. I'd like to say one other thing, and that is way back when, uh, when we first had this conversation about a Harriet Tubman uh, statue in Kingston, Ione was uh, one of the lead voices on this. And um, she is planning something very special for that time period. And she's been back and forth in touch with me. And I'm sure she's talked to Lisa about it. But uh, she's planning something really exciting. So I <laughs> thought you'd like to know that. That's great. <laughs> so I have a question. So the rest of the money that is being fundraised, uh, or, or that is trying to be fundraised, uh, is to offer the organizations that are going to design the programming. And then they will make a request to Matt about this is what we want to do and this is the money that we would like to have or how do it work? Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things I said is I don't want to be a grant funding agency. Uh -huh. That, you know, if, if people need 
present a budget to the committee. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what you need. You know, you know, don't don't be like we usually do when we apply for grants and ask for you know ten thousand dollars more yeah. than we need. Be realistic and say what what do you what is the cost? What do you need to do this programming? And is is there any way that we can give you money for it? Okay, but but the idea is that the organizations can make that request. Yeah, and and I too mad. Well, I wouldn't say to mad. I would to say the to the committee. To the committee. Yeah. Yeah. There's a large group of organizations that have been yeah. participating in these Zoom calls that I think will have a full list, and I think also be able to share it with other organizations. I yeah. Mean, I'm I'm interested in seeing it. Yeah, that would be as good as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So that all the cultural. I mean it. We got ten. Yeah. We're... Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would be all great. The relevancy of our city, you know, yeah. programming that you are the is really important. Yeah, that was also uh, what I was asking. You know, like what well, the program that we have so far. Okay, we have the dates from here to here, and maybe the first week is this, or the second week, or I don't know if it's going to be weekly, monthly, one particular day, or how it's going to be. Yeah. But well, what you, is the shape that I'll send you the link to the, the Google Calendar so you can all see what's been put in thus far. And eventually see if there is our, any organization out there that we could invite to participate yeah, to. We're supposed to get the, you know, supposed to connect with um, uh, Dr. Padalino to see if you know how the schools Exactly, good luck with that. Um, but I, I guess yeah, the, the school should, should be yeah. I, I agree. The school should be yeah. definitely, or maybe directly with the with the teacher, so they can prepare lesson plans around this. Well, and they don't need to go with Padalino. Laura uh, was is going to connect with you guys to they they want to do an in school kind of thing for teachers, um, you know, that educational kind of thing. Uh, so there, there's a lot of stuff percolating. Uh, Chris oh. is going to present the movie Harriet uh, that first weekend at the UPAC. At UPAC, um, you know, David Gonzalez is going to do Finding North. Uh, Margie's going to have something in September. So there, there's a lot of stuff. So Good. I'll you. Yeah, it would be great to have that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So what else do we have? We only have five minutes now. But if you want to do something or any new business or business to follow up, please everybody come to the Broadway bubble on September 17 at 11 a.m. Everybody, if you want to, <laughs> we are going to have um, another program with the uh, with the Alianza. We are going to read uh, Latin American narrative while the, the parents are doing the laundry. We are going to be working with the kids and, you know, just to have these narratives in English, Spanish, and catchy. Um, um, are you going to let him do something? With who? What? Master plan. Oh, yeah, that's why I asked. Sorry, do you want to... Well, that's why I prepared, I don't know. <laughs> it, because you know the thing is, let me, let me do let me, let sure. me do this. Okay, um, I I looked over the master plan, and I think that it's really it's a really fine document, and it's something that we all need to go back to and think about what we uh, you know what our responsibility is in the next stage of this. So what I, I think the best thing to do is to not do the kind of discussion, uh, but to suggest this. Yes. Um, first of all, if, if you don't have this, you know, the plan in this version or, you know, print it out, get it. And, and not only, I don't know where, I have, and, yeah. and get it, additional copies to give to people who, you know, who you think would be important, you know, if they saw it. Because it's you know it's really for the community. So that's and and you know when I realized when I went through it, this is a great way of going through it. I mean, the first thing is I can see I can just you know photo right here. That's yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, but I also uh, I, I tell you where 
the, the issues that I, I started thinking about, and so we can think about those. The first thing is, uh, no question, um, of, the, uh, of the plan to position culture as an integral part of Kingston's overall municipal responsibilities. And, uh, and to make the arts part of that, and you know, uh, thriving public spaces, smart growth, environmental sustainability. So take a look at this and say, how could that possibly happen? Because we, I'd like to talk about it next time. Um, the other thing is uh, something that Richard Frumis has been, as I'm sure many of you know, relentless about, uh, is forming, forming a creative arts business alliance to serve and preserve Kingston's creative economy through advocacy and development programs that support ongoing sustainability. So what I'd like to talk about uh, next time is, what's, is that realistic? If, it's, if it is realistic, how is it going to happen? Who are going to be the people who will be the major forces, uh, you know, and kind of marry the arts and business together? Because we all know so many people in, in both the arts and in the business community. Yes. So take a look at that. Thank uh, you for mentioning that. It's a constant mm -hmm. like, thing in my head. Yeah. <laughs> my position as well. Yeah, and, and maybe and like Richard. Can, but, can I make a suggestion for next meeting? To devote no, that discussion. I was going to say, no offense to guests here, but, but have, we can yes. have no guests next yeah. time. So that we have a half an hour to discuss the, uh, the document right. that we're and then we have and then a full hour okay. with the master plan. Why well, it's useful for uh, to have this is I went then I went to the, the page, uh, uh, page thirty seven in this case, form a creative arts business alliance. So it really goes has bullets, you know, uh, yep. for days, you know, about that. Um, another one I wanted to discuss. Uh, Take your time. They canceled his own. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm here on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is celebrate and embrace Kingston's identity as an arts city uh, and creating an arts and creative fun. This is something that we're not used to yeah. doing. You know, again, this is a, you know, this is a real challenge you know, uh, uh, for us. And if, not that we have to do it ourselves, but how does it happen? Who do we sell it to? Well, we might. Yeah. We might need to be. I mean, yeah. who, who else will do it in this in this valley? You know, know how can we be the right. agents? You know, and that's the kind of conversation we need. I know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it says engage and encourage businesses such as banks, law firms, and real estate agencies. So you know, the, there's a good list there. Yeah. So you know, and, and so that was another one that I thought we should uh, start that's on. Fun, be yeah. rich, uh, and. This was, I thought, really important. Continue to strengthen and formalize the city's DEIA committee created during the development of master plan to ensure that the plan's DEIA goals are met. Now, I don't know anything about the DEIA. We haven't. We haven't. So, we need to, so that's in and of itself, you know, a really uh, critical thing. And when, and at some point. Will we have a report from, not necessarily from the committee, a report from the DEIA uh, a committee at a Kingston Arts Commission meeting. So that oh, I think that, that would something be that, really yeah. important. We shouldn't have to go to them. They should come to us. You know, yeah. And we will go to them when they want, you know, something from us. Um, and I you know I'm thinking that, about this now because of the Alliance about the bubble project. This is such a fantastic that definitely concept yeah. that, that, that would fit uh, very well with that. Um, and um, and then the last is um, uh, the percent for arts program. Yes, it, yeah. This is a critical issue uh, for the city. The more I think about, for example, the Kingstonian project uh, and the fact that there's no art there, you know, and, and, and other uh, projects, um, when is a percent for art program and how is a percent for art program? going to finally be established. Because we talk about it 300 times, and it's not, you know, it hasn't happened. Uh, so take a look at, at this, and then on page 56, yeah. go there, you know, because. I feel this Can I no, also it's, it's ask that point. everybody come to the next meeting with a hard copy of the plan 
Yeah, I was actually going to ask, I'm sorry, it's a little bit of work work, but you've already done this sort of highlighting of six or seven items. Yeah. Is there a way that we can just get emailed on the items so that we can pick their questions ahead of time? Yeah. Um, and, and, but, you know, it says establish a subcommittee of the Kingston Arts Council, you know, to work on the percent for art program. Hello, that's us. Uh, so it, it, to go through this and to, you know, we've never really had these conversations yeah. in a... We started it with that one little yeah. meeting. Yeah. But, but, have it. Follow it. It hasn't stayed on the agenda. Yep. Yeah. Got um, and because we really have like way too many things to do with only one meeting a month, mm -hmm. and it's hard to have two meetings a month. But we have to count our and we're also well, restructuring the board. And, they, and we are trying <laughs> to put order in the exactly is that everything came together. But no, I completely agree, and I think that we were talking about that 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 to the board at least, uh, if it's not a full meeting, most of the meeting to that. Uh, and that's what I wanted to leave behind the rules of procedure. So it's like, okay, it's done, then we can, we can go to this. And I'm gonna, so we can do that in the next one. I'm going to end with something that is entirely irrelevant to the conversation, but because I have this other, <laughs> other uh, capacity as the chair of the Dorsky, which is please remember that the uh, Week Fall, the Venture and Week Fall Communications College exhibition opens next month. At On the 10th. And it is going to be an extraordinary exhibition, it's just a highlight of Kingston's uh, art history, and so inspiring. And uh, and whether we want to get involved, because the exhibition is going to be on for three months. How it, if and when we want to have a gallery talk or you know anything like that, we have the capacity to do that. Can I add to this wakefall uh, notice? Um, yeah. So the so the. Hug students through the drive begun their um, preparation for the uh, exhibition opening, um, having their first archive visit at the uh, at the Whitfall home in, in the archive there, and um, met with um, Connie. Is that how you say it? Ben's son. Oh, Gino. Gino. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wow, that was somebody. Okay. Anyway, um, and uh, and um, the artist in residence is going to be Don Christian um, was also in attendance. So not that Don um, Christian. No. <laughs> Don Christian. Yeah. So that's in progress, and you know the culmination of that project is four month um, student learning project um, culminated to a final exhibition at the mm -hmm. Street Burial mm -hmm. Grounds. Uh, building and um, also some other public presentations, um, art workshops, and things that will be reaching the public. So, and we will be including those events in our yeah, we have a talent program. Yeah, it's just really beautiful. Yeah, because Ben, the exhibit goes all the way to December, right? Yeah. Yes. And it goes to the Virginia Museum. Yeah. And it's not, you know, the the inclusion in the Harriet program is not because he was a black man. No. It's because he was a trailblazer, because he, he was building AJ William yeah. Myers, um, Dr. Margaret Wade Lewis entered um, in the early 70s, SUNY New Paltz, and you know, they were asked to found the Black Studies Division, but it wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy for Ben to fight to have um, Black artists recognized seriously. So, you know, the, the lamp that the lamp lighter that Harriet was, you know, paving the way, and then people like Ben Wigfall taking it. This is why it's so important for any Ben Wigfall related to be, you know, involved in the Harriet Tubman. Um, and communication village was very important for the Absolutely, yeah. And I would just like to say this is new business. Uh -huh. uh, this will be my last Arts Commission meeting. Oh. Uh -huh. My term is up in September, so September thirtieth, um, right? September. 30th. So you have to come to the meeting. Yeah, September. September. Well, my next meeting, the next meeting, I'll be on my vacation. Oh. So um, I, I will. You're not gonna come to the. Well, oh, sorry. I, I'm going. I'm gonna be in Virginia, so for ten days, so I won't be able to. But you will continue in the community. Uh, yes, I. You know, you know, obviously, I'll continue as the, you know, working with the committee. Um, so you can start counting your 
next hour. Yeah. And and just an FYI, um, we put a bid in our house in Savannah, mm -hmm. and um, it was accepted, but the house wasn't for us, so we're still looking. Wow. Um, yeah. You have to go to Savannah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I figured, you know, how long have you been serving on the commission? Seven years. Seven years service mm -hmm. as a founder yeah. and a chair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. chair. I was and a warrior. Warriors. The uh, the Distinguished Artist Award, yeah. the Harriet Project, and I'm, sh I'm sure there's other initiatives. Oh, I'm going out the ladies. Okay, no, the meeting is over. No, that doesn't count. Since Susie opened the door, also I'm. <laughs> Going to step back. Um, I've served two terms, six years, and uh, my commission is up at September as well. And I've decided to not uh, continue on to make space for somebody else. And you know, I feel really proud of all the things that we did together getting a full time arts and culture director and getting an arts master plan up and running. And a lot of and you're not going to get rid of us. Yeah. Oh, but, I mean, but it until is, I move to Savannah. But the commission does need to think about filling two seats now. So. You're really going to Savannah? Well, Peter, but the same for you. You're going to be proud of the committees. I'm going to see what I can do time wise. You know, the county legislator, it, it's a big job. It's a and yeah. I've taken on a huge. Uh, oh, because you're with us. I'm the chair of the ARPA committee, and it's just taken us so you're also an executive director of that. Yeah, so, so, so I've had to do a little bit of work. So no matter what, we should be working with right. the legislature too. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. So Thank you, I'll Peter. Absolutely, but before that, because again, if it's the 30th of September, you can I'm make gonna, it to the next I'll, meeting. I'll so guys, we need to review the application and it would be good to have some sort of input on that and then bring it to the commission. Because we know that that takes some time, but there's good people. Can be if you were planning to go to Savannah and leave well, us just like that. No, I, I talked about this a long time ago. <laughs> I even interviewed for a job in Savannah with their city arts and culture department. Do you know there are Kingstonians who are just moving there now? Oh, I have many. I have BC and Larry. Yeah, 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 I just drew really? BC this morning. And I, so. I consider the school there. Sorry. Can I just say that there's a, a an exhibit opening at the Energy Square lobby building um, featuring the Todd's Marlin. Yeah. Um, oh, right. And it's Saturday. All for sale. Um, suggested donation prices, but. Um, you know, it is yeah. suggested. So, uh, really affordable, beautiful art. Uh, the opening is Saturday from 5 to 7 p.m. and it runs through September 11th. This side of it. One last thing is I'm in the Earth Opera, uh, which is being performed at the Widow Jane Mine next weekend. Oh, Second is the Clark's um, piece that she did last year. It's called Seeds in Nuclear Winter. And um, oh, really? it has a huge cast, a lot of people. That's good. Saturday evening. That's good. What? 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 Um, I get the, exactly. <laughs> so, any more? Well, maybe I'm moving out. Oh, that's good. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to do that. Yeah, thank you, everybody. So, the motion is uh, second, seconded. Everybody in favor? We'll see you guys next month. I'll see you guys. Bye, Anna. Bye, Julio. Bye guys. Bye, guys. I forgot. I keep forgetting that they are there. Oh. It's my fault. <laughs>